Hello, kindred spirits, and welcome to my spiritual oasis. Here, weary souls come to find inner wisdom and peace. Today, we are doing a soulful seven reading guided by astrology and tea leaf fortune cards. So, um, so that's the primary focal energy. Um, it's going to be really guided by our astrological energy here. I also have charms and tarot and oracle. So whatever i'm feeling moved to per group wherever spirit is guiding me that's where i'm going to go today i'm feeling really grounded and connected to you um, for this reading so i'm really excited to get into the messages um, but the primary messages are going to come from our tea leaf um, fortune cards i'm really excited about our readings today so as you can see we have three groups prepared and i will get into them in a second after I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not already a part of the YouTube family here and all of the other kindred souls who are on a spiritual journey with you and me. Um, click like on the video, drop a comment down below if something resonates with you in your reading. And if you're interested in your own personal reading, um, you can connect with me on Etsy. Link will be in the description below. That is the only place that I am offering readings is through my Etsy shop, okay? All right, so let's get into our groups. So group one is over here. And the astrological guiding energy is the sun in Sagittarius. So fiery, robust outwardly expressive um, Sagittarius energy very expansive and in the Sun sign in that sign of self identity and like the unique mark that we are meant to leave on the world um, is really going to be the focus here so Sagittarius in the Sun sign means that our identity is tied up in this idea of freedom this idea of expansion and um, higher learning and higher education and travel and so very robust and outwardly expressive energy excited to get into that group number two is being guided by the third house in venus so venus in the third house third house is typically ruled by gemini and covers like our communication so how we communicate with ourselves how we think how we process information and then um you know you know, Gemini energy is opposite Sagittarius energy. So, you know, Gemini, again, being the original ruler of the third house, is about communication and travel, but it's more local. So it's more about, like, community and um, how we interact with close people around us. So family, friends, our community, that sort of that sort of energy we have venus there and venus is the planet of love and you know not just romantic love but also you know love in all of its forms but also like things that we love things that we enjoy um venus is about indulgence very divine feminine energy um so we're gonna get into that a little bit could be interesting could be interesting um and then we have the third group here which is guided by Libra and the seventh house. So Libra in the seventh house, Libra's at home in the seventh house. Libra traditionally rules the seventh house. And so um, our conversations are gonna be about partnerships in all their shapes and forms, and so not necessarily romantic partnerships only, but also business partnerships, and also about basically partnering up. So instead of doing something solo, we're doing something with other people or another person or another business. So like, uh, developing connections and relationships with other people and of course the scales are connected to Libra energy um, and that's not because Libra is balanced but it's because Libra is always searching for balance um, so whenever you're in some sort of a situation where it's you and another person or entity or business or whatever it's balancing the needs and wants of those entities to make sure that everybody's getting what they need and want out of the situation. And if anything is out of balance or not harmonious, challenges ensue potentially. So those are the guiding energies of our three groups. Pause the video at this point in time if you need a moment to meditate on which group or groups has your message into it. I think we're gonna end up getting pretty deep here. 
a lot of my soulful seven soulful seven messages do get a little bit deep but um yeah i'm excited to dive in again pause the video now otherwise we're going to move right into the readings Hello, group number one, and welcome to your Soulful 7 reading that is being guided by Sun and Sagittarius energy. Okay. Sun and Sagittarius energy. So we're just going to put our astrological dies up here. We're going to flip over our tea leaf card to see what our guiding energy is, our primary focal reconciliation with that pineapple energy there. That's really interesting reconciliation now reconciliation could obviously be connected to a lot of things and we'll get a little bit deeper as we lay out some additional um cards here but um i feel like it could also be talking about just that sun and sagittarius energy reconciling between um that very outwardly expressive sagittarius sun energy and just life in general so sagittarius can be you know, Sagittarius is very optimistic, being guided by Jupiter energy naturally. You know, Jupiter is its natural ruler. Jupiter is very expansive, very... Um, it's a lot of, like, abundance, big energy with, um, with the Jupiter. So it just feels like your identity is very big, potentially optimistic to a fault, if not grounded somehow. So... Let's see what additional connections we have. So we have the kangaroo. And in the kangaroo, um, there's a message here about needing to plan ahead. So some forward thinking here. As well as the haystack, which talks about um, karma. You will reap what you have sown. Okay, well that sounds very ominous. Um, but I feel like connected to, so as we're looking at the cards, we're looking at the the tea leaves that are touching each other, or really close to each other here. So when we're looking at our haystack in relationship to this idea of reconciliation, as well as planning ahead, I feel like you will reap what you have sown is like you're almost in the planning stages right now. And fire energy in general, you know, planning is not fire energy strong point. Action is is fire fire energy strong point that's not to say that fire energy can't plan but it's just saying that it might be um you're gonna you're going to have to do it consciously you're going to have to make the decision to make plans and to plan so um assuming that you plan um the karma thing could actually be really positive for you so we have the wreath here, which talks about sorrow. Hmm. Coins, money will be coming to you. Ooh, I like that in connection with the karma card being next to that one. And then we have the heart, great happiness. Okay, so um, Let's talk about the elephant in the room here. So this wreath energy, right? It's um, sorrow over loss. This could be a lot of different things. Um, I'm getting, for some of you, this loss could be a financial loss, um, potentially something that was done in the past. You know, lessons, right? We learn, we learn, <laughs> we learn lessons. So it could be some sort of financial loss. Um, but I do see with the coins that um, you will you will reap you will make that back is basically what I'm feeling here and the message that I'm receiving here you will make that back as long as you plan ahead as long as you I feel like this reconciliation is talking about like um you know kind of there's a lot of messages so I'm trying to I'm trying to parse them out here. Um, peeling out, especially if it was like some sort of a business situation that maybe didn't go well and you lost something in it, maybe money, maybe pride, maybe whatever. Um, I feel like there's a, a message here around 
reconciling that loss and being like, okay, this happened. And um, what, what can I do better this time so that the same thing doesn't happen again? And I feel like, um, I feel like the kangaroo is saying, we need to plan ahead. You know, this idea of unsettled times to me is like, when things are great and abundant and there's lots of resources and there's money and there's, you know, all of these different things that we wanna need in life, it's important to put away a little bit of that or a lot of bit of that, um, so that when times are challenging and difficult, we've we created a, a, a cushion for ourselves. We've created a safe place and a safe space for ourselves and those who are depending on us. Um, I do feel like, you know, it just feels like even through some sort of a loss or navigating through that loss and then looking to the future, there is still happiness and joy that comes out of that. Um, we don't always see it when it is, when we're actively living it, we don't always see the, um, the hope or, you know, the, the positive energy coming out of it. But I do feel, again, with that sun energy present, feels very similar to, like, the sun, the sun card in tarot. It always shines a, a whole bunch of light. It just, it floods our lives with light and energy and hope and vibrancy. And it, um... It exposes that the shadows, you know, are not real. They're just shadows. And the light expels those shadows. That light energy expels the shadow energy. And I feel like it brings about positive, that high, like positive energy. Um, making a plan and then putting in the energy, re like sewing, right? Um, with that fire energy. And it could be talking about things connected to Sagittarius. It could be talking about education. So getting that degree, working towards that degree or potentially even teaching if you're past that level, depending on wherever you are in your journey, maybe it's teaching, maybe it's um, getting that degree or that, um, certification or whatever the higher learning looks like for you in your world um you know that's going to reap some sort of a positive outcome some sort some sort of benefit um so i feel like the energy of the sun and this kind of forward thinking outwardly expressive sagittarius energy um is really encouraging you to pick up and move on especially if you've gone through some sort of difficulty, whether it be financial difficulty, potentially you lost a loved one. Um, but it's just like showing us that on the other side of loss and on the other side of difficulty and challenge, there is indeed um, hope and life continues on for us. Time to make a decision, says a seven of cups. You could be at a, at a place where you you have to make a decision and you have to choose um, hmm, more choices. The, the lover's card is another card about choices. Um, and it could be talking about some sort of romantic choice, but it could just be talking about choices in, in general. And I feel like the message here, if you are in a place where you are being called to make a choice or make a decision, I do feel like... Um, Mm, that feels like it's connected to the, the wreath. This idea of sorrow, emotional disappointment, um, or just disappointment in general. Um, I feel like if you are in a place where you are being called to make a choice, I feel like 
looking ahead. So what does this choice mean in three years and five years and 10 years and 30 years from now rather than just the current place and time, but looking forward um, and how it's gonna affect you in the long term is um, to me the a strong message here. And also if we look at our tea leaf cards kind of in layers and we think about the layers kind of like time passing, like it's weeks, months, whatever, two, two weeks, two months, three weeks, three months. As we go down, time extends out. And then we see that planning and this message about you're gonna reap what you sow comes before this layer of happiness, this layer of even sorrow over some kind of loss and this idea of making money. Um, so planning ahead and making money, you know, there are steps. But I feel like the first step, which is the pineapple, is this idea of reconciliation, which I feel like is connected to the five of cups. And I also feel like it's connected to the wreath. I feel like these two cards are connected to each other in some way, shape or form, some sort of like I said, some sort of loss, some sort of emotional disappointment, whether that be in an idea, in a venture, in um, a person, in the loss of a person, some something happened that was emotionally di distressing. And now you're being called to and encouraged to reconcile your feelings, reconcile a relationship, reconcile whatever that means for your specific situation, and then feel Feel the emotion, feel the sorrow, feel the pain, feel the anger, feel the frustration, whatever it is that's manifesting, feel it so that you can allow it to pass through you and then you can reap the positive, the high vibrational energy that's, you know, going to come out of that as well. Um, yeah, choices, decisions. Let's get a couple more. Ooh, I love this. Then we have the Ten of Pentacles, which to me is the coins card. These cards feel like they're they're speaking to each other. And um, I feel like the message is saying, again, it's reiterating that fact that once we feel the sadness, feel the emotion so that we can allow it to pass through us and that we're making decisions, looking at the long term, looking at the future, then we can lean into and reap the benefits, the rewards, the financial and 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 um, um, earthy or earthly benefits of making sound decisions that are looking ahead. So the Ten of Pentacles, to me, it's like I always like to call it the happy family card. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be talking about family, but it's just about having an abundance um in the worldly realm so the pentacle <clears throat> pentacles cover earth energy so the earthly realm so that could manifest as money health wellness wealth um family and expansion of family whatever that means to you but it just feels very um satisfying from a pentacles perspective which we like to kind of translate as money let's add a couple of charms see if we can get any additional messages oh we have the butterfly change and transformation I feel like that's kind of what we're going through right now with this whole reconciliation thing. I feel like something has happened already that's been difficult that we're working through. Um, and once we work through that, you know, once we transform and transition and we release, it feels like eighth house energy, Scorpio energy. Once you release that, um, then we, we can progress into the next stage of life, the next phase. We have the Three of Pentacles. Collaboration. Oh, 
collaboration, learning. I talked about higher education, yes, with the Sagittarius energy. Of Three of Pentacles definitely talks about higher higher learning, learning something, learning a skill. Um, um, could be from from school, or it could be like uh, getting a mentor, somebody who can teach you something, uh, whether that be in like uh, a school setting or um, some other some other manifestation of that. We have our doll, which to me is just like a very nostalgic energy, and it feels with the reconciliation and the sorrow and the five of cups, it feels like there was again, some sort of loss and it could be a family member. Um, maybe even someone that collected dolls or, um, yeah. So it just, there's a nostalgic feel like maybe somebody lost someone who um, they've they've known for a long time so this person's connected to you in the past and in your history you share history uh, we have our sewing machine which to me talks about work which is connected to the, the karma you will reap what you've sown work effort you will reap the re the you will reap the um fruit of whatever work that you've done or not done um we have the Four of Pentacles, which to me is connected to the kangaroo energy, talking about planning ahead, talking about kind of like being frugal or having a really good command or control over your financial resources or your resources in general, um, making sure that you have a good handle over your money, over your health and well-being. Um, we have the Ace of <clears throat> Wands. And I feel like this is kind of like through this sorrow and reconciliation and kind of five of cups energy. I feel like there's this this energy, this this ace, this ace of um, wands to me really talks about um, a new. There's like a spark of life. There's hope. There's a new opportunity. You know, with that sun and Sagittarius energy, this idea of like a spark of new energy and we have the joker which i would connect to the fool card in tarot which to me again it, it kind of reiterates that kind of openness and this idea of infinite possibilities and yes you're gonna have to make a, a you're gonna have to make choices and decisions in order to move towards something but i do feel like there's almost like this newness that's coming out of some sort of a loss and you know reconciling that loss yes but then getting back on the horse getting back out there i feel like that's what sagittarius is encouraging you to do to free yourself that freedom energy in sagittarius and that freedom energy in the fool uh card really just feels like don't limit yourself um re yeah it's like deal with the loss and then like reevaluate and reassess and figure out where you want to go um, from that point and be looking into the future as you're making those final determinations on where you want your life to end up or how you are going to get to a place of abundance and happiness and fulfillment and stability um, all of that so Wow, some really beautiful messages for you, group number one. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, make sure to drop a comment down below. Let me know what resonated with you. Click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are not already connected here on YouTube. If you are interested in your own personal reading, you can connect with me on uh, my Etsy shop. I curate all kinds of content to help you on your spiritual and life journey, not just readings. Um, but that is the only place that I do offer readings. So connect with me there on Etsy. And yeah, so thank you so much for your time and energy today. And I shall see you in an upcoming reading. Bye. Hello, group number two, and welcome to your Soulful 7 reading. We have the Venus in the third house guiding our conversation today. So Venus in the third house suggests that um, our conversation is going to be about 
communication and the fact that, you know, Venus is about what we enjoy, what we love. And um, this idea about loving, you know, to communicate, loving your community, loving, you know, uh, um, sharing, idea sharing and sort of that very free minded sort of um, endeavors and really just enjoying that and leaning into that. So let's see what our guiding tea leaf card is. Ooh, so we have the firecracker, which is which is about excitement. So what are we getting excited about, you ask? Well, that's a good question. Let's add some additional cards. Um, could be some exciting news. I feel like the third house also kind of covers messages and things like that, you know, with, um, you know, traditionally ruled by Gemini, whose rule, whose planetary ruler is Mercury. Um, ooh, we have the sun. So happiness and well-being. And let's see. Wow. A lot of really hyped energy. A bow, you are highly thought of. Wow, so this is really super exciting and positive right here. And I'm not really surprised with the Venus energy. Venus is a very, she just attracts abundance and love because she is love and indulgence. And it just feels like, it feels like your social life your connection, like the connection you have to your community is going to be very, very, very positive and bring a lot of really positive, high vibrational energy into your um, sphere. And um, that's interesting. I think there's like the message with the bow saying that you are highly thought of and I feel like it's connected to your community. Like you're very respected in your community or you will be soon. All right. So <laughs> mm. So this is really interesting. So for some of you, I feel like there's a strong message here with the dog far away. You know, the dog here. Dog far away next to muddled and unclear thinking. Um, for some, some of you, and I feel like this could be very specific to uh, someone, that one of your closest friends, or could be a family member that you think of as a really close friend, um either moved away or maybe they're traveling right now and i don't i feel like there's a message around um that it's almost like they're your idea person like you kick ideas off of this person all the time you all are very close in communication. You think highly of them. They think highly of you. Um, and maybe they're away. There's like some distance there. They're away. And this is this might be kind of messing uh, a little bit with you because you don't have that person to kind of kick these ideas off with. Um, what I do see is that, um, you know, with the table, it is suggesting that there is some, you know, hard work ahead hard work ahead of you um and maybe it's even like maybe the relationship was a little uh what do they call it um uh, uh, ooh, yeah that's interesting codependent that's the message <laughs> um you know sometimes that venus energy can be too comfortable like you know, when things are great and beautiful and, you know, sometimes we get too comfortable where we are, it's, it's difficult for us to make the appropriate changes in order to continue growing um, on a soul level. 
Um, but I do feel like it's in this space of challenge. So, you know, with that third house, it suggests that you've maybe been on, on a roll, right? And your thoughts and, you know, have been very clear, very alignment. Could be, could be somehow connected to like a Mercury retrograde thing, but, um, you know, p potentially in the next, you know, three weeks, three months, somewhere in there, uh, maybe the thinking isn't as clear and, you know, maybe you're distracted or preoccupied. And I feel like, um, you know, there's going to need to be some effort or some work put into peeling out of this codependent relationship, even though it even though it was a harmonious sort of thing, like it wasn't like low vibrational or negative, but it was, it was like too easy or depending on someone too much um, or some ones maybe. But to me, like with death showing up, um, death is all about change and transformation. Like there's, there's going to need to be a transformation or a change happening in your thought space. And that's why I feel like it says, you know, this model, this forest um, is coming up because I feel like there needs to be an, a, a progression here. Um, things maybe have been too easy for you in this realm or maybe you've, you know, you've lived in the same community and you're just really comfortable there. But growth doesn't happen in a place of comfort. Growth happens, you know, they call them growing pains for a reason because you're uncomfortable because you're changing. And if you're not changing, you get comfortable. You settle in to a certain life or a certain community, a certain, you know, thought process and people that think the same way as you. And I feel like there, there's going to be a challenge for you in many ways um, to expand your circle in order to uh, grow your ability to communicate with yourself and others. With the Queen of Cups here, it feels very nurturing, okay? So I feel like, you know, death, especially in tarot, looks very ominous. It looks very scary in some cases. Um, and change in any way, even if it's a positive change, is kind of scary because it's different and you don't know what to expect. Um, you know, it, there, there's, it's, an, I feel like it's natural to have a little bit of anxiety, even if it's something you're excited about. Um, but the queen of cups to me is, is really talking about growth, emotional growth here. Being able to grow yourself emotionally, being able to, you could be very young, um, or maybe just young in experiences. Like I said, maybe you lived in the same town or the same state or whatever, or same country or city, um, whatever that, whatever your living situation looks like to you. Uh, maybe you, you know, live with your parents or whatever. Um, not saying that that's bad, just saying that it feels like there's a maturing that, you know, this excitement could even be a new opportunity. Maybe that opportunity is at a distance from where you currently are. And the Queen of Cups to me is just, you know, it, it's that very mode of energy. I feel like, you know, she could represent a person with water, strong water sign placements in their chart, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and a water sign. So that might look like Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. Um, but this Queen of Cups just feels very nurturing and reassuring. Like, you can do this. Um, you know, really encouraging you through and supporting you through this, um, this transition and transformation. So we have the five of wands, which in this position to me tells that there's a strong possibility that there's going to be some conflict and it could definitely be inside. I feel like it's going to be inside of you, this conflict, because, um, you're you're moving into uncharted territory in this transformation in this space of change and and newness and you know whenever we go into a new situation it's always you know there's always a little bit of uh conflict there 
The five of wands could also be talking about your current social circle, your current friends and family might not understand what you're going through and the change and transformation that you're making. So there might be some resistance there. You know what is really interesting that the Queen of Swords showed up? We have two queens, by the way. So again, these could represent divine feminine energy um, in an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or a water sign. Um, Scorpio energy is present with the death card. Um, uh, Venus, Libra, Taurus energy, third house, Gemini energy. Um, I'm just trying to like look to see like these could represent guides, like literally people in your life <laughs> who are helping you through. So the Queen of Swords talks about discernment. She, the Queen of Swords, you know. I feel like I like the Queen of Swords. I'm going to start off with saying it that way. I like the Queen of Swords because I feel like she is the tarot card that talks about discernment. There are a couple of tarot cards that do. But I feel like she blends emotive energy because she's a queen and queens are naturally water energy. And she also blends that air energy. And sword energy is connected to air energy is the brutal, honest truth. Swords are the only focus of swords is on truth. What is real? Slicing through lies, deception, doesn't care about emotions or feelings or anything like that. Sword energy just cuts to the chase. You know, there there is no buffer. We're going to take this shot straight back like and i feel like when that brutal that brutal truth sword energy is blended with the queen energy which is watery that is discernment discernment is that collaboration between emotions spiritual know-how which is intuition and then the truth logic and reason um when they blend together they develop discernment. So I feel like this idea of being discerning, being emotionally strong, going through this transition, which I feel like is going to grow you emotionally um, and spiritually as well, as you kind of expand your horizons and you challenge your current thought processes and, and how you navigate your life and navigate your world, I feel like that exercise is actually going to be really beneficial for you in the long run and it's going to help grow you i mean you could even feel a little stagnant like you could feel like um life in general for you is a little stagnant because you've kind of been doing the same thing and it's working and you're happy and you know you're you're in a really good positive place and space in your immediate circle. But I feel like there's a message here for you to branch out, get out, expand your minds, and gr and you will grow um, emotionally. You will develop a strong sense of um, discernment and um, going through that process of releasing and letting go the familiar and embracing um, the unfamiliar is actually going to help to grow you spiritually and emotionally by leaps and bounds. Um, and so I do see this maybe happening in the next few months here, next three so months. Um, we're trying to, we're, we're making, we're starting the process of making this transition. And I feel like, you know, with Venus, Venus energy present again, you know, from this experience, abundance is going to come out of this. And abundance can manifest in many different ways, not necessarily just financially, but also in our health and our emotional spaces and um, even in our mental space. When you're kind of in the same, you know, gerbil wheel, if you will, um, your mind doesn't have the ability to grow and expand like you needed to in order to um, fulfill your destiny. That felt very intense. Okay.
So let's grab some charms. Me, two. Okay. Ooh, I love it. The Tree of Life. I feel like this charm really talks about um, connection to those that came before us. So that could be ancestors, like our literal blood ancestors. It, I feel like it also talks about our connection to each other, like creative consciousness or spiritual family. Um, I feel... Ooh, we have freedom. Freedom! Freedom! And we have the mask. Face up. So we see it here. So this is the mask charm. The mask charm to me talks about... Okay, so I feel like there's a couple of messages here. I feel like it's in ways it could be talking about basically curating what other people see. And with this you're highly thought of card coming up, you know, and maybe you being a really strong pillar in your community or maybe just having been around for a long time or maybe your family has a really strong connection to the community. You know, sometimes we you know, we fall into the habit of kind of putting on this face of whatever we're expected to be or to, um, you know, what others expect of us. And sometimes that mask that we put up is so far removed from who we truly are, what we truly want and what our true face looks like, that there starts to become like this tension between reality, who you really are, and this persona. And sometimes they'll stretch. Sometimes, you know, the mask is, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today, but I'm doing community service, so I have to put a smile on. You know, I feel like that's less damaging, for example, than someone who's like, you know, I am completely removed from whatever this is. I don't want to be here. This isn't what I want to do. This isn't what I desire. But I still have to show up here because I feel obligated to do that. So I feel like the mask can manifest in many different ways. And I don't necessarily think it's bad or good. Um, but but it, it could suggest that maybe you're putting up a front. Maybe you're a little uh, resistant to change or resistant to what people are gonna think about you. If you make this change, um, what if it doesn't work out? You know, all of those sorts of doubts that we have. Um, but, I, but I feel like, you know, courage is you know, courage to fight for what we believe is, and living in our truth is where we're headed here. Again, I feel like that maturity thing, when, when we are mature and we know who we are and we're solid and grounded in who we are and we're emotionally um, stable and mentally stable and we're in alignment with our destiny and we're working towards our goals and our dreams, what other people think of us is way down on the list. Um, so I feel like there's a message for you, you know, if you do feel a way about what other people are thinking about, what your parents are gonna think about you or what, whatever, that's something to, to dig into. That's that's something to take out of this and, and, and meditate on it and journal through it and um, decide if you're making decisions based off of what other people think about you or are going to think about you. Um, if you're predicting failure without 
actually haven't taken any steps just so that you can live small. Um, so, so those are the message I'm receiving on that. The other note on the mask is, um, feels like an ascendant energy. So less about how we feel and like us hiding a part of ourselves and more about like how people perceive us. So the ascendant, our ascendant sign or our rising sign is the energy, like our sun sign energy is filtered through our ascendant energy. And our ascendant energy is often, often like first impressions. Like when we first meet somebody, they often perceive us from that ascendant sign position. So for example, my ascending sign or my rising sign is in cancer. <clears throat> this is so true. So, <laughs> People, you know, when I first meet somebody and it's a completely new scenario, situation, I know nobody, people perceive me as cancer energy. And that's very true. Um, I'm very shy. I'm the wallflower. Like I like to sit on the edges of the party and then work my way in as the night goes on. I'm feeling people out. I'm, you know, I got my shell up a little bit. So that is, you know, how people perceive me. But, you know, my sun sign is in Scorpio, so it's probably not too much of a difference there. Um, but, um, you know, my Venus is in Sagittarius and I'm I love having fun and traveling and doing all of these very Sagittarian like things. And, um, you know, people don't see see that right away because my ascending sign is um, that first kind of layer. It's that mask. So I feel like the mask could be talking about you harboring part of yourself or it could be how people perceive you. Um, and I feel like it's just kind of like be mindful of that, you know, as you're entering into these new situations, especially if you're going out of your comfort zone and you know, you're you're leaving your community of comfort and you're venturing out. Just be mindful that people might perceive you in a way that's different, maybe than you, you know, actually are. And that might not be any fault of yours, as in you're not intentionally hiding part of yourself. That's just kind of first impressions or that's how people perceive you. I also feel like it's helpful to know that ascending sign or that rising sign, because then you kind of you know what you're working with. And I feel like that made me feel more comfortable just knowing that part of myself. So then I could at least like smile or whatever to be inviting to people instead of um, just kind of doing my natural thing, you know? And I feel like that's part of that growth, right? It's part of that. It's part of what we learn when we venture out and we explore and we connect with others uh, around us so group number two <laughs> and these are the messages that i have channeled for you today i hope this was helpful for you if something resonated please do drop a comment down below and let me know what did click like and subscribe to my youtube channel for not already connected here on youtube if you are interested in your own personal reading please do connect with me on my etsy shop i curate all kinds of content on etsy to help you through your spiritual and life journey. So thank you so much for your time and energy and I shall see you in an upcoming reading. Bye. Hello group number three and welcome to your Soulful Seven reading. So we have Libra in the seventh house guiding your message today from an astrological perspective. So seventh, the seventh house is about partnerships, romantic and other. So business uh, and other types of agreements and partnerships. And it could be talking about like you as an individual or it could also be talking about entities. So if you have a business or a company or something of that sort, collaborating with other businesses and companies. Um, and, you know, the seventh house is, you know, Libra naturally rules the seventh house. So um, to me, the, the conversation is really about balance here and 
um, harmony and finding and connecting in situations that are beneficial for all parties involved. So let's see what our tea leaf guiding energy is. All right, so we have the tiger. Mm -hmm. Doing something risky, taking a chance. Well, partnership is definitely that in, in all of its ways and shapes and forms. Um, you know, our Libra energy, our Libras are cardinal signs, which means they are initiators. They're um, the one that they're the ones that are going to start that project. They're going to, um, you know, make the first move and connect the resources and do different things like that. So, you know, Libras are very business business savvy, and I feel like, you know, with that initiator type of energy naturally also sort of a risk taker um or we should say risk management <laughs> rather than risk taker because it makes it seem reckless but our libras are not reckless our libras are always weighing the options and the choices and also wanting to make sure that fairness is happening as well and from that we get some good fortune so the beetle is suggesting, uh, you know, the beetle and the tiger, tiger energy together is suggesting that taking a chance is actually going to bring good fortune. So we have the crib, birth or conception of a child or enterprise. So it could be a child, but since we are talking about the seventh house and we're connecting with Libra energy and we're talking really about kind of business, it sounds seems like business partnership sort of thing. It could be the beginning, taking the chance on some sort of um, enterprise and um, starting a business or starting um, an enterprise of some kind there. So uh, getting something off the ground. So we have clouds here, which suggests some temporary problems, which you know what is completely normal and natural to me when you're starting anything, and I mean anything, there's always gonna be some sort of challenges that come your way and things that you might not necessarily know exactly how you're going um, to deal with it, because it's new. We have the candle as well as the dolphin. So in the dolphin, I do see here that um, you will be shown the way. So yeah, you're going to have some problems and some challenges, um, but you will be shown the way. And the dolphin here suggests some financial gain um, and financial gain coming from something that you did in the past. And the past doesn't have to be. It can be something that happened in the way long ago past. But it could also be something that you've done just simply before you've made the gains, right? So if we were to look at, you know, top to bottom from the tiger down and think about this as kind of like a timeline here, um, you know, birthing the concept or birthing this enterprise, like taking a chance and birthing this enterprise is going to lead to some financial gains in the future, right? So we're... We're kind of time-wise going top to bottom down this way. Um, and then as we look kind of across, like, yeah, you're going to go through some challenges, but you're going to be shown the way, and that's going to lead to some prosperity and um, financial gains as well. And taking a chance, taking chances and some risks, because that's going to bring good fortune to you, and you're going to be shown the way through this problem. So... It feels like a really a lot of really positive energy connected to um, taking some sort of chance in the sense of like a partnership sort of deal. Um, it feels like a business endeavor, but obviously, you know your life better than anybody else. And again, it could be talking about a romantic relationship as well or a romantic partnership. Um, and it could from that perspective, you know, taking a chance on some sort of romantic partnership you know could bring some good fortune and financial gain uh, there's always going to be problems again any anytime you're in anything and in, especially in some sort of a partnership with another human uh, you know there, there's always going to be some 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 problems but the fact that they're temporary i feel like is is a positive sign it feels positive 
All right, so we have the Three of Cups, and I love the Three of Cups here because to me, the Three of Cups talks about celebration, but it also talks about collaboration as well. Um, so it could be talking about like celebrating some good news with a friend, could be that birth or conception of a child or enterprise, if you know what I mean. So if it's on the child side of things, maybe we're having a baby shower, doing some other things to celebrate that in life. Um, as well as um, some uh, just celebrating um, some of the good fortune and financial gain that happens um, along this journey or just celebrating the partnership, right? So it could be talking about some sort of marriage or even just coming to an agreement um, in some sort of collaboration or business endeavor with somebody and just celebrating bringing together the, the energies and um, opening up that opportunity for the the individuals or businesses involved the entities involved right. make sure i have enough space here all right and then um we have the three of swords so the three of swords really talks about moving through problems and i feel like the three of swords is connected to our cloud energy right temporary problems the three of swords really talks about you know what there there are issues there are problems but it's more so about working through those issues um, in a very uh, logical and um, measured sort of way. That sword's energy is not emotional. Uh, it is feeling like it's dealing with an emotional issue with the heart present and like the rain cloud and there's tears, you know, like this emotional energy. You're dealing with it from a more logical, more mentally strong position. Um, almost like removing emotion a bit out of it, being a little bit more logical about it, and then being able to um, work through the problem that way using logic and reason rather than um, kind of being overwhelmed or consumed with emotion. Um, and then we have the star, which is all about hope. And I feel like that's so connected to the candle energy. You'll be shown the way the star is about hope. And especially in difficult and challenging times that, you know, there will be temporary problems. There will be setbacks. But, you know, it's about keeping the faith and um, knowing that even in the darkness, right? Because we can't see this. We can't see the stars during the day, even though they're out there. They haven't all disappeared. Um, but they, they show up in the darkness. When it's dark out, they um, guide us in that darkness, through that darkness, um, as the candle does in the night, right? We light a candle so that we can see in the nighttime. So, and then we have our Queen of Pentacles energy. And our Queen of Pentacles is that divine feminine mother nature sort of energy. Um, she is this very beautiful, balanced, sort of all-encompassing divine feminine energy because she's both water, big and queen. Naturally, all of our queens are water energy. And then blending that with the pentacles energy of earth, it's like she is Mother Earth. She's about her bag, yes. So about financial gains, I think it's very fitting that she's uh, next to the dolphin card here and connected to the dolphin card. This financial gain and prosperity. But I feel like she's also about uh, abundance in other areas of our life. So I feel like she could also be connected to this idea of a birth, especially if it's about a child or an enterprise, because she, you know, our queen energies, that divine feminine energy, they're the nurturers. They birth whatever they're connected to. So Queen of Pentacles births these worldly things. So births things that will bring financial benefits, births things that will bring health and wellness. Um, so they are, they, they birth, they bring to life um, these different things, whether that's a literal child or whether it's a business baby, <laughs> some sort of um, collaboration with the Queen of Pentacles there. Um, you know, she's assuring its success by pouring in her resources um, and nurturing and nourishing these projects. And um, the queen could represent an actual person who you might be working with, who might be your partner in this endeavor with strong earth sign placements in her chart um, or his chart. I'm just saying her because queen, divine feminine, her. Um, 
So sun, moon, rising, Venus, and a earth sign. So Taurus, um, Capricorn, and Virgo. <laughs> Sorry, Virgo. Sorry, Virgo. Um, yeah, so sun, moon, rising, Venus, and those earth signs. Um, so it could be you or could be somebody that maybe you're collaborating with. Or we're just encompassing that Queen of Pentacles energy into um, this endeavor, this journey that we are on, whether it be in whatever type of partnership that resonated with you here. Yeah, so really beautiful messages. Let's see if we can get some additional messages from our... Charms. Oh, wow. Lots of words. So we have freedom forever reach. <laughs> reach for freedom forever. <laughs> and we also have the Ten of Cups. Oh, I love it. Um, reach freedom forever. I love that. Oh my gosh, that's my life. Oh my gosh, my life motto. So I feel like this idea of reach is definitely connected to our taking chances or doing something risky. And risky doesn't have to be. I feel like, you know, there's, you know, riskiness is on a spectrum. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing something completely outrageous or crazy, but it's just risky for you. You know, for some people, Starting a business is risky, even if it's like a low cost of entry sort of thing where you're maybe selling everything online and there's not a lot of upfront costs and things like that. That still might be a risk for you, like an emotional risk. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something crazy or really dangerous or, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to take this whole paycheck and just invest it in the stock market and some single stock thing that's like super risky. No, it doesn't necessarily mean anything kind of that dramatic. But what it is saying is like doing something risky, taking a chance for you. So again, maybe starting a business is a big deal for you because, you know, you never thought you would or you didn't think you could or maybe you're, you know, there's some apprehension there, maybe um, a little bit of fear, anxiety around the success of this business or whatever it is. It's like taking a risk, taking a chance that is in alignment with your, you know, whatever you just determine that risk is. And it could be risk on many different levels, not necessarily just like bodily harm risk, but it could be emotional risk or financial, you know, whatever. So reaching feels very, like it's connected to the tiger card here. Um, <laughs> freedom, I feel like freedom comes from taking chances on the things that we really care about, honestly. Um, I feel like entrepreneurship, if that is your calling, pause for effect, if entrepreneurship is your calling, it will bring you freedom because you are the one who gets to determine what your schedule is. You get to determine how much work you do, when you do your work, where you do your work, how you do your work, what you produce. Like you're in control of a lot of things and it grants you a lot of freedom. So again, if entrepreneurship is your calling, birthing that enterprise, that definitely can bring you some freedom. And then the forever, I feel like forever kind of talks about, like if we were to think about this conversation as like a cycle, even thinking about Libra, right? Balancing the scales, it's, it's very rarely stays in equilibrium. You know, it's always a little off and you try, you know, correct. And then, you know, it's it's kind of very, 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 very challenging to get it to be perfectly in balance. And that's not to say you can't and not to say that you can't stay in a place of harmony for an extended period of time. But it is meant to 
think about things like in cycles um, that if we were to think about this as a cycle, like, you know, you take a chance and, you know, there's excitement and celebration and then there are some issues and struggles and challenges and then you work through those and, you know, you, you see some some rewards and some benefits and then you kind of, it goes in this loop where, you know, things are really exciting and then there's work and challenge and difficulty and, and then you come out of that and there's hope and then you come back up, you know, so it just feels very cyclical. So this forever to me is basically saying that this isn't the end. It's going to continue going and um, you're going to continue to go through difficulties and you're going to continue to go through places of celebration and kind of checkpoints and moments where you can like pause and be like, I'm really happy that I met this goal or whatever, but it's just continual, you know, and that very earthy mothery sort of Queen of Pentacles energy feels the same way. Like there's a there's a time where we plant, there's a time where we harvest, there's a time, you know, where everything is dormant and then it comes back around, you know, again. So it just feels very cyclical. It feels like it's a really strong message around um, just cycles in general and just just knowing that it just keeps keeps going and I think there's also a message to keep reaching to reach forever reach for always reach for your freedom always be trying to find and discover what way where your freedom is and how to get to your freedom and then that ten of cups energy you know it feels very three of cups it feels very elating it feels like you are on you know you're in this place of power and maturity and flow and prosperity and abundance um especially from an emotional standpoint so i feel like that emotional freedom that emotional fulfillment comes from doing the things that we really love to do and um following our dreams and allowing that spark of life inside of us to guide us to um, the, the places that we are meant to stop at in this life. And the reason why I said it like that and not like get us to our final destination, because I honestly feel like our final destination is death <laughs> in all of its beauty. And I feel like, you know, once we reach one goal and we achieve one thing, you know, we set another goal and we continue to live and continue to pursue um, our life's path and we continue to grow and we continue to learn. And, um, you know, when that stops, that's that's the end of the road, you know, um, even when we say our, our ultimate goal is whatever this is and, you know, being a CEO of a company, that's my ultimate goal. So it's like, okay, so once you get there, it doesn't stop. Like once you get there, you're, you have a, you set another goal and you go after something else. And um, I also feel like there's a, a message for you around the fact that your desires and your goals are going to morph over time. They're going to evolve as you evolve. And I think that's actually a really beautiful thing because it, continue, it, it encourages us to continue pursuing life. The more that we learn about life and our purpose here, the more, you know, the more that evolution takes place and um i don't know i just feel like this is a really beautiful energy i feel like it's a really beautiful message to end our conversation on so group number three these are the messages that i have channeled for you today i certainly hope this was helpful for you and um for your homework <laughs> Uh, or something to take away from this message to meditate on and journal through, I think is this idea of what, what can you take a chance on? What's in your heart right now? 
that you've been maybe ignoring or maybe saying, I'll do it next month or next year or whatever, or I'll do it when I'm X, Y, Z, A, B, C. What is that thing that you can take a chance on? What is that burning desire, that passion inside of your heart space that has been living in there and you've been maybe afraid or um, whatever and actually opening yourself up to that. What is that? I would. I think that that's a good assignment for you, group number three, to take with you. Um, what is that thing that you can take a risk on, that you can take a chance on, that has been living inside of you, just burning inside of you to see the light of day? Um, yeah. So these are the messages I've channeled for you. Drop a comment down below. If something resonated, click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if we're not already connected here on YouTube. If you're interested in your own personal reading, whether that be a, you know, Soulful 7 reading or some other kind of reading, you can connect with me on my Etsy shop. All the available readings will be there. Uh, and I curate all sorts of content there and continuing to curate content there to help you in your spiritual life journey. So check out my Etsy shop if you are so moved to do so. Thank you so much for your time and energy, beautiful soul. And I shall see you in an upcoming video. Bye.